Hey, what's up? It's Deke, RelaxShacks.com, on the road outside Joshua Tree National Park uh, near Joshua Tree, California. We have been staying at this really otherworldly Airbnb.com place, thanks to Mr. Kerry Ezel, who happens to be with us right now. He is the gent responsible for this unbelievable bottle house that uh, you can stay in, yes. right, through Airbnb.com. So i got to ask first and foremost, as we show the viewers out there the different angles of this, what inspired you to build with bottles because I know it's a very I've messed with it myself a little bit it's a very labor intensive process yeah well I'm a decorative artist and I've always admired the old bottle houses that were built back in the early 1900s like in Ryanite uh, Nevada and there's a bottle house at uh, Knott's Berry Farm and I've had this property out here in the desert and it lends itself to some kind of you know this kind of funky art and uh, I like to recycle things I took you know bottles and that were going to refuge uh, old beams, lumber that I collected out in the desert off of cabins that have fallen down, with permission of course, and uh, just put this together. It was just uh, a project of love. I mean, I just really enjoyed doing this. Well, you have certainly a great design sense because even the premises around this property, the other one we're at as well, you have these old autos with this great patina. Even the door in this cabin right here is from an old camper with that porthole style right. window. Um, some of the old motel signs. You're a tasteful and selective hoarder in, yes. in essence you know and I love it because you have this this knack and this flair for that kind of stuff and this is proof right here everything's kind of like you said you were going for this uh, time certain time period yeah. look and it, you seem to have achieved that very well I want to ask with these bottles because a lot of people uh, watching might be wondering themselves what is the process upon which or you know or how you arrive at infusing these in the wall with the mortar Yes. And, you know, cutting them, yeah. it's, it's very laborious. Well, when you, when you pan to the outside, you're going to see that I have a bottom on both sides. And what I did is I took my tile saw, I purchased a glass blade, which we would use to cut glass block, and um, basically cut each bottom end off at four inches off of each bottom. And then I would bond them together with automotive urethane. And what I mean by that is um, the urethane that they use to install windshields in your car, uh, this was a primalist. Uh, urethane, so you need to be careful with that. Some of the urethanes need to, you have to primer the glass, but this it was a primerless urethane. And so I bonded the pieces together, and I didn't care if the colors matched, but I, I was, you know, obviously concerned about the circumference. They had to match up. Yeah. So I would uh, apply the urethane, put them together, and then let them um, dry and cure. And so I created a bottle block. So that made me uh, a bottle that had an end on both sides, which would let more light come into the structure, which I think is more beautiful. Um, and it's amazing to be in here, just especially in the morning when the sun comes up. It's, uh, it's quite a treat. What about the whole process to, to stack them and to, the, the mortar in between? What do you use for that? Because I imagine you have to deal with expansion, contraction, shifting, bottles cracking. Yeah, How do you counteract that, a, that? That was a big challenge in the beginning because I know that with regular uh, Portland cement and sand, if you bought it like from Home Depot or whatever, if you would install that uh, around these bottles, the, the uh, heat uh, cold and hot this expansion traction will make the bottles break. So I went to the, uh, the cement co manufacturers and said, hey, look, I had this project, can you help me? And none of them actually could give me an answer, so basically I just started experimenting. And what I ended up doing is buying um, glass, glass black block mortar and then adding more Portland, uh, two scoops of Portland sand, Portland and two scoops of sand, and I use acrylic bonders, okay, there's an acrylic additive, which actually makes the concrete one stronger and also makes it adhere to the glass. Okay. So I put rebar and uh, ladder wire between the rows here, and then used also um, uh, a um, product called um, uh, Weldcrete, which is um, if you have a dry joint, like a cold joint in concrete, if you put this on there, it does prom uh, prom promote adhesion. So I also use that. So basically, you know, all these rows weren't done at the same time. So there's little, there's cold joints. But when you get done putting them together, then you use the mortar on the outside. You can use, you know, a sponge. Uh, I use paint sticks, whatever, to go in between the bottles. And then with gloves on and a sponge, I would just basically, you know, feather it out, blend it. And as you can see, you can't see where it starts and stops. Yeah. It and it's, you know, 10 years right. old. And at this point in time, there's no cracks in it. Oh, 10 years ago, really? Yeah, almost. Well, nine, wow. oh, a little over nine. 
So um, it's really held up well. Of course, we haven't had any major earthquakes yet, so we'll see what happens there. Now, the bathroom real quick, could show us this. And, and I keep forgetting the name of that aircraft landing, those metal strips. Yeah, those are Marston mats. Uh, Marston mats. These, uh, these were landing strips that were used during World War II. And basically, I just cut them up and, you know, put them into the project. I used, uh, you know, uh, old lumber, and I made a little um, uh, vanity and a concrete top. I haven't finished the plumbing yet. I got an old old toilet out of an old trailer. Oh, okay. And this is a tr this is a doors off an old trailer that I found, and just utilized it. You know, it just kind of fits, kind of funky. It's got an old port hole. Oh, I'd love a door like that in my house. That thing is so great. Yeah. And then just in this in the bathroom, I incorporated some rocks with the bottles, and I've got old gas station uh, porcelain lights that I use for lighting, and uh, all the all the beans are, you know, vintage, 100-year-old, most of them are from back east. And then all the brackets I made, I had them cut out at a metal shop, and then I just took marotic acid and, uh, you know, aged them out so that they, um, you know, fit the fit the look. The windows, I had to have the windows custom made. They are, the jams are, the jams are eight inches, so I had the windows custom made. And then I just uh, basically, you know, kind of distressed them and gave them some patina and funked them up a little bit so that they matched. Your favorite bottle in here, I have to ask. Would be my mom. When my mom got me, she went to Europe, to Ireland, and she bought this. It's a water bottle. It's a basically it's a a water bottle. But my mom got that for me. She was so excited. She goes, "I got you this cool bottle." So I just put it there. So. Yeah, it's a nice, almost cobalt blue. I love this yeah. one here. You said it was a Contro. There's Contro. There's uh, Bombay Gin. You know, and there's you know there's Perrier bottles in here. And the thing is, you have to use wine bottles, you have to use liquor bottles, you can't use, most beer bottles are way too thin walled. So if you try to cut them, you may get a good cut, but they're so thin that they'll probably break in, at, this, at this kind of a process because of, there is some pressure. But these are all thicker walled. The champagne bottles are obviously a lot thicker. And there's uh, mostly wine and champagne, but there are some liquor bottles in here too, and water bottles. There's some Perrier bottles from, uh, you know, you can get the regular store, Perrier, and then there's water bottles. The blue ones are from, most of the blue ones are either uh, Sky Vodka okay. or, or they're, um, uh, well, Trader Joe's, if you have a store in your area, had a water bottle. These were water bottles from Trader Joe's. How many hours do you think overall, if you didn't say, uh, went into well, this? Well, I mean, to give you an idea, for me to cut 100 bottles and to um, clean them, and I was, you know, kind of on the anal side, I took the labels off. And to bottom, 100 bottles, which gives me 50 blocks, is about an eight-hour day. Wow. So I have no idea. And there's about 7,500 bottles in here. And that's just to make the blocks. And then you come out here and build the structure. Yeah, as you say, beyond that, you have all this almost t timber work here, your, your flooring, all that right. kind of stuff, your rock work in the back. Right. So this but is you know, beautiful. Yeah, it's a two-year process. It was just, you know, I'd work, I had to work to, you know, pay my mortgage and feed my kids. And basically, at a very, the most tolerable, you know, wife you could ever have because I had bottles all over the house everywhere and basically I would you know after work I would cut and put them together on the weekends and then when I got enough in my truck I'd head out here and put it to you know start putting it together. Well I imagine to a certain extent it's therapeutic to do these kind of monotonous oh, work. Yeah. yeah no I loved it and just and you stay focused you yeah. get in the groove and you just like a machine cutting and gluing. Exactly you get that like muscle rhythm or muscle memory you yeah. zone out. And mode. obviously as the time goes by and it's starting to come to fruition it really motivates you to uh, try to complete the process, but you, you have to have patience with this kind of a structure. Now, now again, uh, to wrap things up, if people want to rent one of your properties and just see all the crazy yeah. light-up motel signs, cars, I mean, it's the, I mean, we're having so much fun out here just checking out your style. I love it so much. Where can they go? Or where, where, this one's our bungalow in the boulders? Yeah, or? this is bungalow in the boulders, Joshua Tree. You can find us on Facebook. Uh, we just started an Instagram page. It's bungalow in boulders joshua tree um and then i have my own website when you started which is uh joshua tree home rentals .com, and you can t contact me that way if you want to come and i also have another prop property around the corner which is called the atomic trailer ranch it's my new project i'm going to have like a vintage trailer park with three or four vintage uh, 1950s trailers you get some cool. great concrete furniture up here yeah. too i was admiring that this morning thank you uh carrie zell once again thank you so much appreciate oh, it yeah. man